Alright then, hi guys, this is the Definite Article for Grandy School, and I've got a short for you today basically on the art of lobby analysis in Zoom and other fast forward games. Um, this that you see on the screen is a lobby taken from um, Party Poker's Fast Forward. Um, and that's the entire that was the entire extent of the lobby at about uh, apologies, I, I will need to get uh, stop that from showing up. That was the full extent of the lobby at about 1.30 this afternoon uh, UK time. Not that that's particularly matters to you, but um, w uh, which time it was, but this is what we're dealing with. So, there, there are a few gen general assumptions I'd like to talk about. Uh, before going into any more depth about anything really. So, the first, gen the first general assumption is that generally one tablers are fish. This holds true almost all the time. Um, the, in, in, this, in this list there are eight players who are one tabling and I can confirm that every single one of those is a fish. Um, the second assumption is that people who are playing three or four tables are regs. This has even fewer exceptions uh, than the one tabling rule. And I can confirm that everyone in this list playing three, three or four tables is a reg. Now, two tables is, is something... It's, it's kind of a middle ground because sometimes fish play two tables, sometimes reg plays, reg plays two tables, and in fact, you, you guys have probably seen if you've watched my live play videos, that I I, I actually have a, spe a specific player tag for someone who's playing two tables. Now, I guess that, that a two tabler is a fish roughly 40% of the time, so that's a bit more often than the average in the pool than the average for an unknown in the pool, but um, nev but nevertheless it's not particularly high. Now, I can, con I can confirm for the purpose of our future analysis that this, that this player, this uh, Brokenhead195, he's not a fish, in fact he's a short stack regular, um, which they're never fun to play against just because strategies are so simple and it's a pain in the arse and and it's just completely different to everything else that you likely to be that you're likely to be playing so let's then talk about how how your edge works where your edge comes from your edge comes from being better than other players but if you want to win in poker games your edge comes from being sufficiently better than other players that you can not only beat them but also beat the rake. And rake is an absolutely huge factor in micro stakes and small stakes games. And it's it's, it's basically the reason why I think that this lobby is close to unbeatable, and why I choose why I chose to leave the pool. You can see four entry. This I've got four entries here, um, but ultimately, I was I was only in for a very short time, and in fact, I only played thirty two hands. So yeah, so certainly left the pool very quickly. Um, I I just wanted to check how big fish some of these people were, but, but, but because. I tend to only use one fish tag nowadays, but obviously there's a huge difference between someone who's playing 83-12 and someone who's playing 22. You'll be able to beat the 83-12 player for a much larger clip. Okay, but before we get into the analysis of this specific lobby, let's talk about how rake works and what you're actually what you're actually having to beat. So we'll start with some reg table analysis, uh, with looking at how regular tables work. So let's say that on a reg on a regular table, um, you have uh, six players, uh, one of whom is a fish. Now I think that's a pretty standard composition for re for regular tables nowadays. Um, you might you might get softer tables 
with two or maybe even three fish at micro stakes or on soft sites but I don't believe that that's going to be especially common now let's say let's say this is 100 ml and I, I guess that on average the rake is 100 ml is 6.5 big blinds per 100 hands now that's that means that the, on in, in total the table is raking 39 big blinds per 100 hands um, which is 6.5 times 5 is it? that sounds wrong no uh, 6.5 times 6 sorry now let's let's assume that for, let's assume for a second that position is, let's assume that position is irrelevant just to make our model a bit simpler um, so, so we're just going to assume that, that the Jesus seats, and I've discussed this in a previous video, but just to redefine that term, that's the fish to the direct, that's the seat to the direct left of the fish. The the, the Jesus seat has the same EV as as a as a as a seat directly opposite the fish. Now, some people say that being out that being to the right of the fish is the worst seat. I disagree. I I think that being directly opposite the fish is the worst seat because you will play fewer hands with them. Sure, they'll be in position uh, against the fish more often again than um than the seats for right the fish. But playing hands with a fi with fish is going to be profitable either way. Okay, so and let, let's let's then assume that the regs all have e uh, e equal skill level. So. Basically, the regs are all breaking even against each other, and they're all winning. Um, Regs break even against each other, and they all win the same amounts from the fish. Now, how much does that fish have to be losing at for those regs to be breaking even? For the regs to be be breaking even, and just think about that for a second. Because of rake, the fish has to lose at the exact rate of rake for the regs to be breaking even. The fish effe effectively has to be paying all the rake. Now, losing at 39 big blinds per 100 hands in any game in the long run isn't especially fun. So when you do get a fish who is losing at 39 big blinds per 100 hands, which is quite a few, let's let's remember that someone who's losing at say five big blinds per 100 hands is just quite a bad, it's just a very bad reg. Um, who is pro who is losing post rake back, but they're probably still playing something somewhat reasonable like 21 17. Um, someone who's losing at 39, for goodness sake. Um, someone who's losing at 39 big blinds per 100 hands is probably just playing an absolutely ridiculous strategy. Like, I, I guess that, lo that losing at 39 big blinds per 100 hands is roughly 40 V pip territory, although I couldn't say for sure. Now, let's rerun this analysis with a 10 ml table. Now, at 10 ml, I raked. 11 big blinds per 100 hands over a large sample. This might not be strictly accurate anymore. Um, I know some rake structures have taken place since I last played 10 and L. But doing the same maths, the table is raking 66 big blinds per 100 hands, which is a simply huge amount. Two thirds of a buy in are being taken off the table by rake every 100 hands. Now, if it, if we make the same assumptions, the fish has to, the fish has to lose at 66 big blinds per 100 hands for every reg to break even. So basically, what we're doing is saying that we have these assumptions that um, that that the regs are all breaking even against each other, so position is irrelevant and they're all winning the same amount from the fish. Basically, position is relevance. Now, this is a very simple model which doesn't apply precisely to um, to reg tables. So, for instance, um, 
if if on a red table you have got a semi fish, so so someone who's playing like twenty V Pip and seven PFR or something. I apologise, I'm just going to pause this until the, that truck stops reversing. Yeah, so as I was saying, I, I apologise, I've kind of lost my train of thought a little bit. That truck was there for about four minutes. Um, not sure how that's possible, but yeah, it must have reversed over someone's house or something. Anyhow, um, for that, uh, for, for that assumption doesn't hold true at red tables because when the fish is, say, 20 V pip and 7 PFR, now I regained my train of thought, excellent. Um, then the person to the direct left, the person in the G seat, they will probably, they will probably, probably be winning at a very decent amount of, against the fish because they'll be able to isolate them a lot. They'll be playing a lot of pots head to pin position with the, with the fish. And if you've watched my videos, you'll know that playing pots heads up in position with the fish is one of the most fundamental things in poker that you need to be able to do to beat the micro stakes. Now. They will, they might be able to beat a rake of eight nine big blinds per hundred hands, simply because the fish is giving them that much money. If we assume that the regs are all breaking even against each other, which is a kind of faulty assumption, but we'll get onto that later. However, the person directly opposite the fish there is just is just going to be losing unless they have a big edge against the regs. So that's why that's why seat selection uh, as well as table selection is is important at reg tables, but regular tables but let's let's ignore that for a second and this isn't a lecture about seat selection let's look at zoom so we have we have this lobby now now fortunately zoom is a bit simpler or fast forward games are a bit are a bit simpler because the assumption that position doesn't matter actually holds because on average everyone will be in every position and it, uh, with Against um, against every player in an equal amount of the time. In the long run, there's no way to avoid that. So we can actually get rid of position from from this equation. Just edges against fish and edges against regs. So if we remember that um, at, at only six max table, including a zoom one, the table is probably paying about thirty nine big grants per hundred hands in rake. Now. Let's 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 look at how many fish are in this pool. There are a total of forty-four entries in this pool. I believe I'm remembering that correctly. Just let me do a quick count. I will pause. Okay, so in this pool there are forty-five entries, of which um, eight are one tablers. So doing a bit of quick maths, you count that one in roughly every five point. 5.625 players are fish. Now, this is actually a slightly better ratio of regs to fish than in than on most regular tables. Because normally one, one player in six will be a fish at a regular table uh, at this limit. However, upon jumping into this pool, you, I, I can quickly see that all but one. I, I quickly saw that all but one of these fish had a V pip of below thirty. Now, it that makes it very, 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 very difficult to turn a profit against these guys because they're ultimately not making the huge preflop mistakes that tend to see fish in a lot of trouble. Um, if if you can't get someone to pay you off. On for three streets with uh, six three suited on, on king six two. It's going to be much harder to make money off them than uh, than a huge whale or even a even like a fifty v pip fish. So first to have if we first have a decent edge in this in this pool. Given on average we will we won't have per, uh, we won't have position on the fish on average. Um, on 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 average we will have. Like r roughly halfway the EV between between the best position and the worst position, although I guess it's probably slightly higher than halfway because the value of the best position uh, is that's a greater outlier than the um, disvalue, so to speak, of the worst position relative to the fish. And so and and at some tables because it's a zoom pool, you'll have even no either no fish or multiple fish. Now, hmm. 
where was I? Ah yes, so because of this, chances are for, for you to beat this 6.5 big blind per 100 rake, you probably need an edge against some of the reds. Now, having having a post rake edge edge against reds is impossible. So we'll, we'll just throw that out there immediately. Having a, having if before we consider rake, it's actually quite tough to consider your edge against against reds simply because. In when you when you're somewhat good at poker, it's quite easy to think that you're better at poker than you are. So when when I've been adopting a t a table or pool selection strategy, I tend to I I hope um, deliberately under underestimate my edge against Rex. So I, I I only I only rate myself as better than Rex. Um, in, in in a given pool, if I think they're absolutely atrocious, um, and and probably just losing like five big grinds for hundred hands. Now there's only one reg in this pool. I'm, I'm not I'm not going to name names because um, I don't think that's constructive to you or to me or to them, who who I think is really bad. So I think I I, th I doubt that I have a big edge against any against many of these regs at all. Certainly, I know I know that my I, I have a precisely zero edge against this Theo Mechus guy. I could be pronouncing it wrong. I've never actually heard it said. Um, <laughs> but um, I will, I'll never play on a table against him. Uh, fortunately, um, I, I heard I heard he's a gentleman, and I'd hate to take his money. Um, anyhow, yeah. So we do we do get the situation where in, in, in a pool like this, it's actually going to be really really tough to beat the rake. Given the fish aren't big fish, with one exception, and given the regs are mostly, at least somewhat competent, and that's that's essentially how I advocate making making your table selection, making your pool selection decisions in fast fold games. Look at the lobby, look at the number the number of regs and the number of fish, and see if you know if there are any outliers. On average, in a zoom game or a fast fold game, I should say once again. A fish is, isn't going to be as bad as, as a fish on a, on a regular table because, once again, the biggest mistake that fish tend to make is uh, is, uh, is playing far too many hands pre-flop, and that compounds itself post-flop. So if a fish isn't playing, isn't making the, the big mistake of playing too many hands pre-flop, they're not going to make, sorry, uh, they're not going to make the same um, gravity of mistakes post-flop, and thus then you're not going to win nearly as much money against them. Now, because fish can fast fold and quickly get to the next hand in, in zoom, they don't have that boredom factor, which often causes people to play too loose. So, on average, your fi a fish in zoom will have something like 33-ish VPIP, rather, rather than the 45 you might see on regular tables, and that actually makes a big difference. So, uh, if you see a pool like this, chances are you shouldn't be playing it, unless you're uh, unless you're close uh, close to the best reg in the pool, in 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 the player pool in the, uh, at the stake at large. Now, on an optimistic day, I'd like to think that of myself, but I don't I don't have the sample size yet. I feel to, conf to confirm it, so I'd rather err on the side of caution. And not make bets which could, which are quite somewhat likely to be minus EV, like playing in this pool. Anyhow, I've been the definite article for Grand School, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's given you some interesting insights into the process of pool selection in Zoom, in Zoom, and good look at the tables.